Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, May 15th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from San Diego, California. Today, Microsoft released its monthly set of patches among the 79 vulnerabilities patch. Well, 23 are rated as critical and two have been known before the patch was released. Now, one of these two vulnerabilities has been used in exploits already. But the vulnerability that's getting probably the most attention is CVE 2019-0708. This vulnerability is a problem in the remote desktop services. Now it doesn't affect Windows 10, it only affects some of the older operating systems like Windows 7 and earlier Windows Server 2008 as well as 2008 R2 goes even as far back as Windows XP and Windows 2003. Now, usually Microsoft, of course, no longer really makes any statements regarding these older operating systems like Windows XP, but due to the severity of this particular issue, Microsoft has actually released a special patch for these legacy operating systems. You can get this patch for free from Microsoft, so it's not something that you have to pay some special extended service fee for. An exploit for this vulnerability should not require any user interaction, so this makes this a vulnerable vulnerability if the RDP service is enabled. Maybe worthwhile to scan your network for any systems that have the RDP service enabled that shouldn't have it enabled. Usually not a great idea to leave the service exposed anyway, even without this vulnerability. Another interesting vulnerability is CVE 2019-0725. Well, uh, yet another DHCP client vulnerability. Haven't really seen any details here yet. Uh, it's sort of interesting that this is the fourth DHCP client related vulnerability that Microsoft is patching just this year. Have been looking at this uh, since there have been so many of these vulnerabilities all for a sudden. Microsoft in Windows 10 added a couple additional features that actually have been in DHCP for a while, but hadn't been in any uh, Windows client in the past. Uh, one of the earlier vulnerabilities, for example, were released to the domain search uh, feature. This is where the DHCP server actually sends a list of domains that are being added automatically. There's some compression schemes that can be used there that then led to buffer overflows. Not sure if this latest vulnerability is related to this feature. Microsoft also included guidance to mitigate a new site channel vulnerability in Intel processors. They're sort of a little bit similar in impact to the Spectre vulnerabilities. There are four new vulnerabilities total that can be used to leak data between unrelated processes. As so often, these vulnerabilities are named as zombie load, riddle, and fallout. Now, since these are vulnerabilities in Intel CPUs, so not really just related to Microsoft Windows, we also got updates today from Apple for Mac OS and also for Linux in order to address these issues. And Apple actually released a whole set of updates, so it wasn't just Mac OS that was updated today, but we also got updates for iOS, tvOS, watchOS, and Safari. These updates address numerous vulnerabilities, nothing really sort of out of the ordinary that I could spot. A whole lot of WebKit vulnerabilities are being addressed here. This update also includes patches for the recently made public SQLite 3 vulnerability. And to round out Patch Tuesday, we of course also have updates from Adobe. The update for Flash only addresses a single vulnerability. On the other hand, the update for Adobe Acrobat and Reader does patch 84 different security issues. 
As usual, the Flash update is included in Microsoft's update for Windows. Also look for an update for Chrome, which does include Flash as well. Now, the value of trust seals on websites has often been disputed. Typically, these seals are supposed to attest that the website displaying that seal has passed some form of test to assert that they are secure in some form. So it's somewhat ironic that security researcher William DeCrude found that the seal provided by bestofthewebcom included not just one, but apparently two keystroke loggers. According to a brief news release from Best of the Web via Twitter, the affected script was hosted in Amazon's content delivery network. They say they are notifying affected customers and it's not clear, at least according to the press release, how this particular script was compromised. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.